Hey, it's your friendly neighborhood puppy chaser. Oh my gosh, you guys. I am so tired. I'm so tired. I am in the middle of moving and selling my house, and it's exhausting. And I bet you can hear it in my voice. But I promised you a video, and so that is what I am delivering. I have been trying to make this video for you guys for, what, two months now? Ugh. Anyway, here we go. Today's topic, death. That's right, we're talking about euthanasia. There are many forms of euthanasia practiced today, but I really want to focus on two of them. Euthanasia by injection versus euthanasia by firearm. And we're talking about which one is more humane. Now I know what a lot of you are thinking. Obviously the injection is better. Firearms are just so barbaric. Well, I'm going to walk you through how each works, and you can decide for yourself. The following may be tough to hear, so you get to continue at your own discretion, and I don't want to hear it. If you keep watching this video, and then you're all, Oh my god, this is just so, so traumatizing. Well, then you shouldn't have watched it. So, here we go. Let's start with the lethal injection. The animal slowly falls into a deep slumber until it simply doesn't awaken. Sounds super peaceful, right? Well, here's what happens. First, the vet will administer a pre-med or sedative to bring the level of awareness down. This is a superficial level, where the animal is still fully conscious, but the awareness of pain has been dulled. Now, some pre-meds work better than others, dulling the pain completely or simply just taking the edge off. Then they will place an IV catheter, typically in one of the forelimbs, but sometimes in the hind limb, this requires the animal be restrained, the limb shaved with automatic clippers, which are loud and they vibrate, and a catheter to be inserted into the vein and taped in place. Next, the vet will give the first of two syringes, which is a stronger sedative. It will slowly bring the animal deeper into unconsciousness. Here the animal is entirely unaware of its surroundings, which means it can't hear your voice as you're going, Goodbye, finally! I love you! I love you so much! Finally, the last syringe will be given, which is the lethal injection. It is the poison that will stop the heart. This injection is not felt by the animal at all. It should be noted the number of injections may change based upon the reactivity of the animal. Some animals require more sedatives than others. This can be from heightened stress, nerve sensitivity, or an overall resistance to the drugs themselves. What we usually fail to consider are the surroundings during the euthanasia process. Often you have brought the animal to a clinic with smells and other factors which can cause stress. Not to mention, you are likely visibly upset, and the animal will be empathetic to that. Then the animal will be painfully stuck with needles multiple times before losing the ability to remain alert. The animal does not understand what is happening or why, and all of this can be a really scary experience. The good news is once the animal has slipped into that deep sedation, there is no longer any fear or stress, no pain, and therefore, no more suffering. Okay, let's turn now to euthanasia by firearm. Unlike the lethal injection, this act is not performed in the sterile setting of a clinic, but in the very non-sterile outdoors. Preparations for euthanasia by firearm are simple, mostly dealing with the firearm itself and the cleanup afterwards. I'm only talking about shooting to kill and not to test for rabies. Okay, the quickest way to end a life is a shot through the skull. Death is immediate and completely painless. Euthanasia by firearm is not the clean death offered by the injection. There will be blood, and lots of it. It is very, very messy. And because the death was instant from a once fully conscious animal, there will be convulsions. This can be very unnerving to witness. These tremors are not indicative of suffering as the animal is already dead. Despite the death being instant with no pokes beforehand, there is another side to this coin. Often a premeditated euthanasia such as this would require the animal be in a cage or dying on the side of a highway. That alone is enough to cause the animal stress. Furthermore, large animals such as horses must be shot square in the forehead, which means they will be looking straight at you when you pull the trigger. Honestly, I'm not sure if that is more horrifying for the horse or the poor soul performing the task. Alright, it's time for my opinion. Dum-da-da-dum! 
I believe firearms are more humane in terms of ending the life. If used correctly, they cause the least amount of physical pain, and they are the quickest path to death. Seeing as in the US we can't, aren't supposed to, dispatch cats and dogs with firearms, I can't speak from experience there. But the theory still remains. Bearing in mind, I'm only considering the animal in my assessment, so I'm going to play a little bit of devil's advocate here. Euthanasia by injection gives the appearance of a peaceful transition from this life. That's something that a lot of people need in order to cope and heal. Whereas with a firearm, it's pretty violent and graphic, and would mentally scar a lot of people for life. So, I am not at all arrogant to think that just because I'm okay with euthanasia by firearm, it is the most humane option for everybody. I get it. Being humane means you actually have to take both parties into consideration, both the animal and the person. So, in that case, euthanasia by injection would be the best thing to do. So, now that you've gotten through this delightful topic video, what are your thoughts on euthanasia? Is there anything I didn't take into consideration? What option would you choose, and why? As always, not all ACOs share my opinions. For now, this is ACO Twiggy calling 1042. Until next time!